What's going on, guys? Let's talk about yesterday's maybe the craziest interview ever uh, with Ye, formerly known as Kanye West, and one of my personal favorite people to, you know, just uh, give political commentary, I guess you could say Alex Jones. So <clears throat> I said a few days ago on Twitter, by the way, if you're not following me on Twitter, I, I'm kind of more active on there. I'm going to start becoming more active on YouTube here as well. But on Twitter, I'm at Evan Paul 5 I believe is what my what my handle is. But anyways, let's talk about what happened yesterday. That was a wild podcast. Um, three hours. I wish there weren't so many breaks. I know that's how Alex has to pay the bills. And I'm sure he's got lots of bills to pay these days going back to, you know, everything he's he's getting sued for and all that nonsense. But anyways, I was really wanting... Alex Jones, as soon as Ye left Tim Pool the other day, I was like, dude, this is prime time spot for Alex Jones because Alex will let you talk. Alex has his own platform, essentially, right? He's not getting a, a bunch of views as he would have if he were on YouTube or whatever, like many of these other people. Um, I mean, like even we're on YouTube right now, not going to get Alex Jones views even that. But still, point is, Alex has his own platform. Alex believes staunchly in free speech. He's going to let Ye say whatever he wants. The issue I have is Ye, I just felt like he was, he's so fed up with kind of the labels that have been getting thrown at him. Like so many people are like, oh, this guy's anti, like after the Drink Champs interview, he's anti-Semitic, he's anti-Semitic, he's anti-Semitic, right? And that's, that's what mainstream corporate press all of them said that. Then you looked at, oh, then, then Drink Champs deleted the interview. Then there were several of the times, like the Lex Friedman podcast, um, you know, briefly we saw it in the Tim Pool uh, podcast, and then we saw it um, in an interview that he gave to just the media outside. I don't, I don't know what it was, but he was outside one night. I might share if I if I can uh, figure out how to do it, I'm gonna share a clip of that interview because I think it was important. The ABC Kids and Family, YouTube, Los Angeles Times, Discovery Network, Paramount Pictures, Facebook, Huffington Post, Yahoo, Marvel, Hulu, Cosmopolitan, Time, um, Touchstone, Associated Press, uh, Pixar, Miramax, HBO, New York Post, Lucas Arts, MSNBC, uh, DreamWorks Animation. Now, the thing is, I skipped over maybe about five of them because it was just unclear on this list. The red are the executives that are Jewish at these companies. Do you think they stuck together when they heard what you said? Was that was that the was that what happened? Well, what I said is, hey, you know, I have I've had experiences where it felt like I was being teamed up on. And I didn't realize that that term would be considered to be anti-Semitic. So I had a, a mediation um, with Adidas today. And I think Adidas felt like because everyone else was uh, ganging up on me that they had the right to just take my designs. I wish he would have used the platform that Alex Jones gave him to really speak his mind in a way where he was a little bit more genuine. Cause I think that where he was at with it at that point was you guys are calling me anti-Semitic. You're calling me anti-Semitic. I'm so sick and tired of it. I'm not even going to sit here and defend the point. I'm just going to roll with it. You think I'm anti-Semitic? I'm anti-Semitic. I love Hitler. He didn't say he's anti-Semitic, but he said he loved Hitler. He loved Nazis. He think, you know, he did make a good point in one, in one area, I will say, because he said, you want to say all, I, oh yeah, you can't say all Jews, right? Because all Jews aren't this or that. He's like, well, all Nazis aren't bad. You know, and he said some of those Nazis were over there just people fighting for their country, just like American soldiers are here. We've done some messed up stuff in America and our soldiers, we, we prize them as good or praise them as good people, regardless of what they've done because they're fighting for their country. Even if whether or not they should have been fighting or hurting whoever they were hurting or killing, we still often, you know, all, most of us will look at them and say, hey, we appreciate you. You're a good person. So that, why is that any different for the Nazis in Germany at that time? They thought because they were brainwashed, I would imagine 
They thought they were doing the right thing. So they were, so the point is, just like Ye can't say all Jews, they can't, uh, you know, you can't say all Nazis were bad. I think that was his main point in that. But I think, again, he didn't do a very good job of really bang it, bringing that home in terms of his getting his point across because he was so sick and tired of defending it. And I think he made a very big mistake there because Alex Jones was the one guy that wasn't going to push back, right? Like if Ye would have just said and kind of went about it how he went about it on, uh, you know, his previous interviews, like he could have said, hey, I don't hate anybody. I love everybody. But the Jewish people are disproportionately, you know, in positions of power in certain media, Hollywood, banks, etc. Like they have very large levels of influence across the world. I don't think... Alex would have pushed back at that point. And even if he did, Ye would have been able to, to say whatever he wanted because he would have had the platform to do that, right? Meaning it wasn't going to be a setup like what Lex Friedman, uh, you know, did in that interview with him where he, he just tw turned the tables on him. Lex would use his, you know, Jewish uh, history as a crutch to say, we've been through this. That's why you can't treat us like that. But then on the turn, as soon as Ye would say something about Jewish people, Lex would then say, no, that's individuals. That's not Jewish people. Right. So like it, that was Ye's tired of that. Then he goes to Tim pool and immediately he saw, and he did to be fair, warn Tim pool multiple times said, Hey dude, like I'm going to leave. Don't do this. I'm not doing another Lex Friedman. Right. And um, Tim continued to do it. And uh, Tim is just the ultimate fence sitter. I like Tim. I'm not trying to talk shit about him. But he is the ultimate fence sitter. He is a guy that he's always going to steer away from being too controversial, right? He'll say some controversial stuff. But as long as he knows that there are enough people that will have his back and he won't get canceled for it, he'll say it, right? But in this case, he wasn't going to let Ye say anything without turning back around and pushing back and saying, no, those are individuals, blah, blah, blah. Excuse me one second. Good. So that was my only thing. I understand where Ye is coming from. I really do. I get how, look, you got to understand he lost everything, right? Like he lost his family. He lost billions of dollars. The, he lost the vast majority of his net worth. You know, this guy went from being literally the richest black man in America, one of the richest people in the world to being a guy that's, don't get me wrong, he's still rich, but now he's got to pay Kim K $200,000 a month for child support, even though she, I believe, is a billionaire, but hey, you do what you do, court system. Uh, they're trying to break him. Excuse me. They're trying to break the man. And what I'm worried about at this point is that I hope they didn't break him mentally because I think Ye has a gigantic heart. I think he is very intelligent. I think he could do great things if he were to be able to articulate his viewpoints. And I mean, he needs to be able to do it from now on um, in such a way that it's not so divisive. Like Alex Jones at one point said, hey man, are you, I know you're trying to be shock. You're trying to have that shock value or whatever. And yeah, it was like, no, I'm not. And it's like, dude, word it better because now it just looks like you're giving the people that wanted to believe you were anti-semitic you're giving them the ability to say that knowing that that's what they they want to say it anyways right so like you're giving them the ability to say to have more um merit to saying that you're an anti-semitic even though he said he loves all jews his main point, I think, with the whole love thing was he believes that love is the way to solve the problems, right? And that's why he said he would sit down with Ari Emanuel. He would sit down with George Soros. He would, you know, he loves all Jews. He loves Nazis. He loves Hitler. He loves everyone, right? He loves Jeffrey Dahmer, he even said. I think his point in that is like, that's what the Bible says, and that, or that's how Jesus Christ is. Jesus loves all of us, right? If you're a Christian, um, like I happen to be. So I, I understand what he, where he was going with that. I just, I don't agree. I just think that it, it causes problems when you talk like that about things that are so, it's uncomfortable when you say that about Nazis and things like that, right? And it allows the media to do what they want to do anyways, which is make you seem crazier and crazier and they want to bury you. And if you know that, and I know Ye knows that, it's like, 
why give them that opportunity? And again, I do understand he's completely fed up with it. He's tried to explain himself rationally, but he's pissed off to no end now. And he's just like, you know what? You want to call me a, a Nazi lover, anti semite You know what? That's what I am. I think that was, I get it, but I don't agree that that was the best course of action of how to handle, especially if this guy's really running for president in 2024, like he says he is. I mean, he's putting together a team, a uh, campaign manager, et cetera, et cetera, a whole team to, to help him run his campaign. And I think that he needs to articulate himself much better moving forward. I would love if he would go on like Joe Rogan, if Joe Rogan would have him right now or in a week or two, whatever, and kind of say, look, man, I was on Alex Jones show. I was a little wild, you know, but here's how I really feel. Uh, you know, I don't like a lot of the things that Hitler did. I'm just, just pointing out that he also, you know, was in some ways successful, right? In terms of not the way we, we, you and I would want him to be in terms of good person, helping people, you know, treating everyone equally, but he was able to do certain things that many other people wouldn't have been able to do, right? And even though those things were very bad, I get it, but that's, he should, I wish he would go clarify that and say, this is what I meant to say. You know, I was just kind of having a little too much fun on Alex Jones show. It's Alex Jones. He's a legend. I wanted to go in there and have fun. I, 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 I would hope that would be the next move, but we'll see, you know, because it's difficult to stick up for Ye, even though I know, I feel like I know, I don't, I don't know him personally, but I feel like there's no hate in his heart. I feel like, like it's almost insane that someone would believe that he actually hates Jews or anybody for that matter. I don't think there's any way he does that. I don't think there's any way that's actually what's in his heart. Excuse me again, guys. Anyways, so that's kind of my take on it. I thought that Alex was, I thought Alex did an okay job. However, I i have heard back in the day when I was, used to listen to Alex Jones, I mean, I don't know, 15 years ago at this point, and I swear, maybe I'm remembering this incorrectly, you know, it's not exactly all available, his old content, but I swear Alex Jones had said before that like he knows it's that particular group of people that is, I wanted him to ask Alex Jones, who are globalists? Who are the globalists predominantly made up of in terms of ethnicity, right? I would love, have loved for him to ask Alex Jones that question. And I would have just really loved to see him and Alex Jones have a serious <clears throat> conversation about the powers that be, the globalists, who's running the world, the new world order, what they're trying to get you to do, et cetera, et cetera. I would love that. You know, I'd love to hear Ye talk more about vaccine mandates and how he felt about the vaccine. That was a another good topic to talk about in that scenario where you have a platform that's not going to censor you no matter what, basically, right? And so I thought that there was a missed opportunity there. I also thought Alex was a bit tentative, and I really hope this isn't the case because I'm a huge Alex Jones fan. I thought he was a bit tentative in the sense that he didn't he was like nervous and didn't want Ye to keep saying the things he was saying, even even before Ye started saying the wild stuff. He didn't want him to say um, too much about that particular group of people. And I think it's because he's looking at it like, I don't want any more lawsuits. I don't know how I could, you know, I don't want somebody to, to get me uh, the idea that I'm saying that the Holocaust never happened and then they sue me again. Like, I think Alex is just a little bit beat down. He just, again, he's fresh off the Sandy Hook thing. So I understand that perfectly well. I just, um, I wish, I feel like we left a lot of meat on the bone of what this interview could have been. And so um, for that reason, I am a little bit bummed out. But overall, I totally understand where Ye is coming from. I totally would still consider voting for him in 2024. And, you know, I'm intrigued to see where it goes from here. Next thing I want to talk about real quick is just Elon Musk. Last week, I believe it was, he came out and said, hey, amnesty for those that were uh, previously suspended. And, you know, everybody agreed or the, the vote was, I think, over 70% of people agreed as long as they hadn't done anything illegal or had an egregious amount of spam. Elon said everyone's going to come back. Not only have I not seen, and maybe I'm wrong, but I haven't seen it, people coming back in, in droves that were suspended, right? Like, for example, everybody on that podcast yesterday was not uh, on Twitter. And now, Ye's banned. So my main thing now is like, Ye posts a picture of Elon Musk getting hosed down 
by none other than Ari Emanuel, the, the guy that Ye's always talking about. And then that's his last tweet. And Elon says, oh, no, it wasn't because of that tweet. And Elon in that picture, if you didn't see it, he wasn't looking like he was in peak physical condition. I guess we can just say that. And um, and Elon says, no, no, Ye suspended. And I think it's a permanent suspension. Not for sure, for sure on that. I hope it's not. But he said he was suspended for inciting violence. The only thing that I could think of that would be in any way construed to even be in the realm of inciting violence that Ye tweeted yesterday was a certain symbol. And it was like a, it looked like a certain symbol, but it wasn't. I don't know. Point is, whatever symbol it was, I don't think that it was inciting violence, right? Like even, I mean, God forbid, even if it were a Nazi symbol, it, to me, I don't think that that in itself is a direct insight of violence. So that to me, I feel like if you're going to say that's the reason why, and then we're going to look at it and say, hey, he wasn't inciting violence, then now you're, whole this, you're this free speech absolutist that's now incorrectly banning people by your own rules, right? So um, that concerns me. I really hope we get Dr. Peter McCullough, Dr. Robert Malone, Alex Jones, uh, yay now. I, I really hope we get a lot of those, or every one of those guys and girls, whoever were suspended, back on Twitter, Laura Loomer. And um, I think Twitter could be something really great for the world and, and uh, for the United States if we are all able to get on there and speak our minds freely as long as we're not you know, inciting violence or whatever the rules are. I'm fine with like the limited rule set Elon's put in place. Spam, of course, is, you know, we're not, we don't want spam on there because that ruins the platform. So I'm fine with getting rid of that as long as it's 100% spam. And, uh, but overall, I think Twitter could be a huge, hugely beneficial place for us because um, it's where many, many, many people get 90% of their news, right? Like you watch, I mean, you hear about something on Twitter and at least this is what I do. I hear about something on Twitter and then I go on YouTube and watch a video about what I heard on Twitter, like the news that I heard on Twitter. So, so anyways, um, that's all I got for you today. I'm going to start trying to upload at least every Monday through Friday. And, um, so if you're enjoying the content, subscribe, ring the bell, comment, and I will talk to you guys later. Peace out.